Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. You are lost in the mountains in the middle of a forest being hunted by a monstrous lumberjack with his giant axe. Today we will recap the story of the 2013 movie, Axe Giant, The Wrath of Paul Bunyan. In 1894, a group of lumberjacks led by Bill Foreman were working in the middle of a forest well into winter. After a grueling day of work in the snow, the team end their day and prepare for dinner that has been freshly hunted. While the cook is ringing the dinner bell for the meal, Bill, who is the head lumberjack, goes into the middle of the forest to relieve himself. After doing so, the man returns to the camp and is horrified by what he sees. His employees are brutally dead, all totally dismembered. Apparently the signal the cook emitted caught the attention of some bloodthirsty beast. Even with the shock, the man has to fight for his life, because the bizarre creature that did that to the team has found him and starts chasing him. But the chase is over quickly, for the monster catches up with the lumberjack, and they engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. As they duel for strength, the mutant woodcutter rips the man's finger off with a single bite. Due to the severity of his injury, Bill loses his strength and ends up being pushed up a saw, which splits his body in half. Decades later, a group of young offenders are sentenced to spend a week in the middle of that same forest as part of the Minnesota State Juvenile Correction Program. On the appointed day, the young convicts go through a sort of attendance list one at a time and receive their supplies to survive in the forest. Even with the scheduled time, one of the young women named Claire, arrives accompanied by her father who is later revealed to be the town sheriff. Claire was arrested for drunk driving. She was leaving a party drunk and while driving home, another altered driver ran a red light and ended up hitting the young woman's car, causing him to be thrown out of the vehicle. Along with the other four youngsters, she is forced to remain under the guardianship of a sergeant named Hoke, and also under the tutelage of Sam, another employee of the corrections department. As soon as everyone gathers at the police station, the sergeant takes them to the area they will have to spend the next week. As they approach the place, a very suspicious man starts watching them hiding among the trees. Nearby we can see a bear stalking its prey. As the animal prepares to attack, a gigantic humanoid creature appears behind him. The monster catches the bear from behind breaking its neck and takes it for its next meal. As soon as the group arrives at their destination, they begin to set up the tents and prepare the campfire. After they have set up everything, the instructor, Sam, calls the young people to begin a kind of group therapy, where they begin to tell what each one did to be condemned to participate in the program. As they tell their stories around the campfire, that same man who was watching them from among the trees before, simply appears in the middle of nowhere shouting nonsense. With the noise, the sergeant comes out of his cabin and appears to know the lunatic, saying that the man, who goes by the name of Meeks, used to live there in the woods and although he was quite strange, the fellow was apparently harmless. After the scare, the group ends the therapy and everyone goes into their tents to sleep, since they will have to wake up at 5 am the next day. At dawn, the sergeant goes through the camp waking them up one by one so that they can prepare for the trail. Under pressure from Sam, Hoke ends up leaving his pistol stored in the cabin and goes unarmed for the hike. After getting ready, they begin to follow the trail, climbing higher and higher up the mountains, until after a few hours, the group decides to stop for lunch. Zack tries to convince the group of youngsters to flee from there and try to lose the sergeant until they reach the nearest town. Frustrated at not being able to convince anyone, Zack walks away from the group, and, afraid that the boy will end up running away alone, Martin goes after him. While they are talking, the pair finds a bull's skull, and one of the youngsters decides to take the horn as a souvenir. After they join the rest of the group, Sam says that Zack should leave the horn where he found it so that the group can continue on their trail, but he does not listen and decides to carry the object in his backpack, intending to make a bong out of the animal part. It turns out that that horn has great sentimental value for the giant, and we will soon find out why. In the nearest town, Ray, Claire's father walks into a bar and shows he is worried about his daughter, as he didn't like Sergeant Hoke very much. He inquires with the bar owner about the corrections program and the woman tries to calm the man down, saying that there is nothing to worry about. Even a little reluctantly, the sheriff agrees back to the mountains. As soon as he realized that they have taken the horn, the giant cries out in a rage that can be heard from miles away. Upon hearing the creature's creepy, angry cry, the group thinks it might be a mountain lion and they go on their way as usual. When they are near the end of the trail, the group takes a short break to rest. Just as they are standing there catching their breath, it is possible to hear the thunderous sounds of approaching footsteps in the distance. Trish sends text messages in one of the rare locations with a signal, the giant arrives behind her, but the girl does not notice the movement because she is distracted by her cell phone. While everyone stares in surprise at the size of the creature, the girl receives a fatal blow from the axe, which splits her body in half. At this point, the sergeant tries to draw his gun to shoot the creature, but then remembers that he left it in the cabin. 
With no options, everyone desperately rushes towards the camp to save their lives. They end up splitting into two groups. One group is made up of Sergeant Hoke, Sam, and Claire, and the other is made up of Martin, Rosa, and Zack. While trying to hit the second group, the creature hits a tree, causing a huge branch to hit Rosa, injuring the girl and knocking her down on the spot. But instead of finishing her, the giant starts chasing Claire's group, who desperately run towards the cabin. After a while of running, the group stops hearing the giant's footsteps and begins to think that they have managed to lose him. But they were totally wrong. Suddenly, the beast appears right in front of them, Sergeant Hoke decides to draw attention to himself, intending to buy time so that the rest of the group can escape to the cabin. The man takes a blow from the axe that separates his torso from his legs, but he is still alive. Even though he can't move, Hoke starts shouting unfriendly things at the creature, trying to get the giant's attention to turn to him. Even with his heroic attitude, the most Hoke can manage is to annoy the giant, who simply steps on his body, causing him to pop like popcorn. With the giant chasing Claire and the others, Rose's group returns to pick her up and they take her in the direction of the camp for first aid. Halfway there, the two groups meet again and arrive at the cabin. After tending to the girl's injuries, they begin to wonder what that creature was and why they were attacked, but since they have no time to lose, they decide to devise an escape plan. Sam takes the sergeant's pistol and goes to the van to stand guard while Martin tries to make a direct connection. And although the plan seems decent enough, the boy takes too long and Sam starts to hear the giant's footsteps approaching, so she decides they'd better go back to the cabin, as they've been exposed outside for too long. As soon as they get back inside, the giant appears and starts dragging the van away, taking the only means of transportation the group had to get out of there safely. Tired from the day's chase, the creature returns to the abandoned mine where he lives and begins to clean the blood from his axe very carefully. Back at the cabin, Claire bandages Zack's hand and Meeks appears outside in despair. Upon entering, he asks what they did to make the giant so angry. Seeing the horn in their possession, the man says they have made a big mistake, and begins to tell about the story of Paul Bunyan, explaining why the group is being persecuted and also details about the attack on Bill Foreman and his lumberjacks in 1894. The giant, whose name is Paul Bunyan, was a baby who was born with a rare disease that made him grow much larger than a normal human being. Thanks to this very disease, Paul developed a bizarre appearance, driving away everyone around him, because they were scared to death of young Paul. His only friend was Babe, a wild bull. As winter passed, the animals began to flee the forest, which was becoming more and more devastated by Bill and his men felling hundreds of trees. With food supplies running low, the group of woodcutters needed a good source of food as soon as possible, so Bill and his employees began their hunt. While looking for an animal, the woodcutters found a badly wounded bull. Since the animal was helpless and wounded, the workers shot it and took it back to their camp. Being a large animal, the bull would be a good source of food until the end of winter. The problem is that this bull that Bill shot down was Babe, Paul Bunyan's only friend. On that fateful day when the cook sounded the bell to signal that dinner was ready. Paul was nearby and heard it. As he approached to see what it was about, he saw all the workers feeding on his friend. Seeing that grotesque and painful scene, Paul goes into a state of rage and brutally eliminates each of the woodcutters, with the most frightening elimination going to Bill, who even after having his body split by the saw, was still chopped into small pieces with his own axe. After the attack, Paul fled until all the snow melted, but the local people did not rest until they captured him. As they led him in chains through the town, the people spat on and humiliated Bunyan, leading him to an abandoned mine near the town. The idea was to blow it up completely to seal Paul inside. Over the years, everyone who remembered the lumberjack case passed away. And Paul Bunyan managed to escape from the mine, so he took Babe's remains and made a sort of shrine to his one true friend. With no one remembering him, Paul lived many years away from civilization, and thanks to his illness he grew more and more. The giant lived for almost a century away from it all, until the moment Zack desecrated his friend's resting place. When he finishes telling this story, Meeks says that they might get the creature's forgiveness by returning the horn to its sanctuary. In an attempt to get his forgiveness, Zack leaves the cabin in the middle of the night and throws the horn in the direction Paul had gone, while begging the giant to leave them alone. Thinking Bunyan didn't hear him, the young man starts walking back to the cabin. The giant throws the horn back, which pierces Zack's abdomen, killing the boy instantly. Apparently now there was no more forgiveness, Paul's focus became eliminating all of them. Just at dawn, Meeks leaves the cabin saying that he is going to get his truck to get them out of that place. At the same time, the police dispatcher tells the sheriff that there has been a sighting of a bear near the cabin where his daughter was staying. Concerned, the officer immediately goes to the area carrying a tranquilizer gun. As soon as he arrives on the scene, 
Sheriff Ray finds Sergeant Hoke's legs next to a giant footprint. The man is horrified at this scene and runs towards the fire tower, trying to communicate with the central office to ask for reinforcements, but unfortunately he gets no response. While they wait for Meeks to return, a macabre silence takes over the cabin, but the dread really spreads when Paul appears striking the structure of the house with his axe. With the impact, the giant opens a huge hole in the ceiling, holding Rosa by the leg. Sam takes the sergeant's gun and begins shooting at the creature, which causes it to hurl Rosa into a tree, killing the girl immediately. After recovering from the pain of the shots, Paul corners the group and when all seems lost, Sheriff Ray finally arrives on the scene, taking down the giant with several shots of tranquilizer darts. Taking advantage of the gap, they start running towards the officer's vehicle, but halfway they end up running into Meeks, who tries to stop them from leaving, afraid that they will call for reinforcements to kill Paul. Then Martin simply jumps in front of Meek's shotgun and stands holding it toward his belly. As was predictable, the young man was shot in a critical area, and dying soon after. While threatening the group with his weapon, Meeks did not see that the giant hurled his axe in the direction of the group, and when they all duck, the axe passes through the man, separating his head from the rest of his body due to the violence of the impact. With one less problem to worry about, they run to the sheriff's vehicle and while Claire drives, her father tries to hit the giant with tranquilizer shots, but since the vehicle was moving through several curves in the forest road, Ray can't hit the shots. During the getaway, the sheriff loses his gun and almost falls out of the vehicle, but manages to stabilize himself, only to have Claire crash the vehicle soon after, so that they now have to flee on foot. Upon reaching the road that leads to the city, the trio runs towards a bridge, where there was an armored door that could hold the creature. The door was locked, causing them to be cornered by Paul. Just as the sheriff begins to wonder if they would survive jumping off the bridge, reinforcements finally arrive. The giant sees the group of people and begins to advance toward them, but he is hit by every possible type of weapon. After hundreds of shots, Paul Bunyan drops his axe and the giant falls off the bridge. Finally, he is destroyed. It is revealed that the police backup was alerted because the father of the owner of the bar, which the sheriff stopped by the day before, had a scanner that picked up the police radio frequency. Seeing that the man asked for reinforcements and was not answered, the old man gathered some people around town and they headed into the woods to help. With the creature dead, the men take Paul's axe as a souvenir to put in the bar, and everyone was finally able to return home safe. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.